what are you know like the, the couple of trends that you find interesting for the near future for the medium future and what is your guess what will happen in machine learning in the next five years in the industry not in academia i would say the realm of like ai fairness um sometimes called you know one of the core problems that you have in machine learning is that it kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier where the data that you put in is the thing that informs the model so when you're making predictions in in production what you're doing is you're really just rehashing to some extent what that input data structure was or input data set was. Like everybody is biased in some way and institutions are also biased, right? People and institutions generate these data sets. So it's quite natural, of course, then that so AI is going to be just as biased, and it, this is what actually happens in, in the real world, it's just as biased as the people who produce the model. Um, now, there are ways to account for that, and, and this is an open area of research, and I think it's, it's particularly interesting to me, both as a citizen and as a human, right? I believe in human solidarity. Um, and then very specifically in our applications in the finance world, like, you know, if you're biased in the way that you return Yelp results or whatever, like, eh, maybe not ideal, but not the end of the world. Um, but, uh, well, sorry, Yelp, you're great. I love you, use you all the time. Um, but if you're talking about healthcare or finance or something where the the net result is a, a true like potentially in some cases life-changing um, whether you know you lose a home or you don't get a loan or you get the wrong diagnosis or you know these very very serious um, things you better make sure that the way that you train that thing is actually correct uh, and so I think there's gonna be a lot in this realm of AI fairness this related realm of explainability or interpretability, which is when the model makes a decision, why did it make that decision, right? Again, another open problem. I think these are gonna be some of the forefronts of the, the near term. I mean, there's a bunch of others in the, the, the deep learning realm around. So in deep learning, for, for those unfamiliar, what you have are, you have your input processed by something that kind of looks like the human brain, where you've got effectively artificial neurons that are kind of communicating with one another, and they sort of, uh, fire in various layers and with various structures and whatnot. And there's lots of uh, different ways that people structure them and so on. The problem is that it requires so much data that it's, it's ineffective for, for many domains because you just, you actually can't get the data. So there's ways, how do we generate them? And there's some, you know, there's a lot of fancy stuff there, which is really fun. I think ultimately it's not taking advantage of what we take advantage of. I think fundamentally we don't require that much information. Um, obviously, evolutionarily, we've acquired a lot of information. But I think that is a guidepost to where we actually need to take these things. And I, I think causal inference, I think, I think reasoning about causality is, you know, you've either got randomness or you've got structure. If it's not random, it's structured in some way. Understanding those structures is to understand cause and effect. So the more we can understand cause and effect, causality, the structures that, that are, are permitted by it, um, I think that will actually be how we get there. I think it'll look like deep learning and the, the technical implementation of it, because I, I think that is a generalized structure. But where we go in the long term, I think, is going to have a lot more to do with being able to reason efficiently with very little data um, about what's actually going on around us with tasks and, and, and inputs we've never seen before.